In 2021, the United Nations launched the Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, aiming to prevent, halt, and reverse the degradation of ecosystems around the world. This global initiative called on every nation to take urgent action to revive the natural systems that our survival depends on. Since then, millions of dollars have poured into projects that were aiming to undo some of these environmental damages. From planting native trees in Africa to rewilding former industrial lands in Europe, these efforts share one goal, and it is to rebuild a living world that can support future generations. As these initiatives take root around the world, a critical question emerges, and it is that which one of these projects have been actually successful and are they making a measurable difference? In the drylands of Africa, just south of the Sahara Desert, lies one of the boldest environmental experiments on Earth. Launched by the African Union in 2007, the Great Green Wall aims to reforest a massive belt of land, which is more than 8,000 kilometers across 11 countries, to hold back desertification and revive the damaged ecosystems. Since 2007, 20 million hectares have already been revived, and it not only supported the growth of trees, but it also improved agriculture. In Senegal, Restored lands are now producing crops again, and farmers are earning a steady income while also supporting local food markets. In Ethiopia, the government and local communities work together to restore the lands through reforestation and sustainable land management. They use traditional methods alongside modern water conservation techniques, and the results are visible. Vegetation has returned to the area, rainfall is better absorbed, and local farmers are now able to grow crops and graze animals again. In Niger, native species like acacia and baobab are now thriving again. And in Mali, community-led restorations are reversing soil loss and bringing back grazing areas. Economic success is also part of the picture. According to the UN, the Great Green Wall has already created around 350,000 green jobs, and it aims to create 10 million by 2030. In areas like rural Niger and Burkina Faso, community leaders report a drop in outward migration because these green jobs are giving families a reason to stay and restore the land they grew up on. The Lus Plateau project is widely recognized as a pioneering success in restoring damaged ecosystems and enabling long-term economic opportunities for rural communities. The project is located in north-central China, and it covers around 640,000 square kilometers of dry land, where centuries of intense farming and deforestation have caused severe soil degradation. In the 1990s, the Chinese government, with support from the World Bank and other organizations, launched an ambitious project to restore the Lus Plateau. The project employed a combination of traditional knowledge and modern science techniques to quickly restore vegetation in the area. In many cases, this jump-started the natural recovery process of the soil, and it supported the growth of native plants of the area. Other key strategies included terracing hillsides to reduce soil erosion and increase water retention, introducing sustainable farming practices to boost crop yields without harming the land, and planting native trees to stabilize the soil and improve the area's biodiversity. Over two decades, the Lus Plateau project has achieved remarkable results. Vegetation cover increased from around 40% to over 60. Soil erosion dropped dramatically and agricultural productivity improved significantly, which helped raise incomes for millions of farmers in the region. The area was no longer in the risk of flooding, which improved safety for downstream communities. The success of the Lus Plateau project has inspired ecological restoration efforts worldwide, and it showed how smart land management, combined with community engagement, can reverse environmental degradation and lift people out of poverty. For over a century, Europe's industrial boom drove economic progress across the continent, but it also left behind a trail of environmental damages. Rivers were diverted or polluted, forests were cleared for extraction, and the air was polluted with soot and chemicals from the factories. Long after the factories were shut down, the land remained contaminated, and in many cases, it was considered too costly to repair. In the late 20th century, as heavy industry declined across Europe, ecologists and local governments began to rethink what to do with these vast tracts of abandoned land. 
Instead of redeveloping these sites or leaving them fenced off and forgotten, some began to explore a different approach, and it was to allow natural ecosystems to return and reshape the land. One of the most iconic examples of this shift can be found in the southwest of England. Inside these giant domes in Cornwall, there is a rainforest with its own crops, wildlife, and thriving ecosystems. Located in the southwest of Cornwall, the Eden Project was built on an abandoned clay pit that had been mined for over 160 years. What was once a vast, barren industrial crater has been completely transformed into a center for education and sustainability. At the heart of the project, there are two main biomes. The rainforest biome is the largest indoor rainforest on Earth, and it features thousands of tropical plants along with hundreds of crops from around the world, such as bananas, chocolate, coffee, sugarcane, pumpkins, and many more. Next to the rainforest, the Mediterranean biome recreates the warm, dry climates of Southern Europe, and visitors can explore terraced landscapes filled with grapevines, citrus trees, and many beautiful plants that thrive in these environments. The Greek-inspired gardens extend the Mediterranean theme with classical architecture inspired by ancient landscapes. Outside the domes, 20 acres of gardens thrive with thousands of plant species that are adapted to the Cornish climate. Sustainability is at the core of the Eden Project. Instead of using traditional materials, the biomes were constructed with a special type of plastic that is stronger than glass, and it is 100% recyclable. Around the world, these restoration programs are proving that healing damage ecosystems is possible and often essential for our planet. From the drylands of Africa to the industrial heartlands of Europe, the ecosystem restoration is no longer just a hopeful idea, but it is a global movement that is reversing damage and reshaping economies. These efforts show that when science, policy, and communities come together, damaged landscapes can not only recover, but they can thrive and restore the balance between people and the planet.